Hey you all, it's Brother Jason. I haven't done one of these in several days and it's good to be back with you again, even if it is over the internet. I haven't done one because honestly they're a little hard to do. I tried to do one uh, over a couple of days back about a week ago and I could not get it to come out right. It drove me crazy and you know how it is when something doesn't work right on a project. You step away for a while and come back and so I guess that's what I've done and so I'm back. And the Daily Devotional today asks a question. And maybe I'll ask it in two ways. The first one is this. Do you know what the date 587 BC is about? And the second question is attached to it. And it's this. Why does it matter? What, what about that date? And what about the Bible matters at all? Why does it matter for us to know Scripture? Those two are tied very closely together because 587 BC casts the shadow into which everything else in Scripture really is written, especially the Old Testament, but much of the New Testament as well. For instance, in Revelation, if you want to talk about what evil looks like, it looks back and it calls the name of the one that caused the devastation in 587. If you remember the name Babylon in Scripture, that's reminding everybody of what happened back then in 587 BC. 587 BC, this happened. The Babylonians showed up at Jerusalem's gate because they were angry. They were supposed to have been paid a tribute every year, and they weren't being paid. And when they showed back up, they were angry about it. And so when they came into the city, they laid siege first for 18 months, maybe more. They laid siege. They created a famine in the city that was just horrific, and then they busted through the gates. And when they did, they killed everybody. They leveled two-thirds of the city, just destroyed two-thirds of the city. Entire villages were wiped out. And the temple was ripped apart brick by brick. The place that God resided was torn apart brick by brick and everything taken back to Babylon. The leaders were exiled, those that weren't killed. They all went back to Babylon. It was an absolutely devastating day. And it was the day that Jeremiah wrote to Lamentations asking, why in the world has this happened? Where is our God in the midst of this? 587 was such a devastating time. It was called the first Holocaust, and it counts a, counts a, or casts a, 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 a shadow over the rest of Scripture. And so if it does that, it's very important for us to know what happened on that date. If Scripture is written because of that date or is influenced by that date, then that's the date that we need to know. And not only do we need to know that in Scripture, but the importance of Scripture is, is that we can learn so much else. The Bible is a revelation of who God is. If you want to know who God is, if you want to know what God looks like and what God's about, look at the Scriptures. It's our baseline, if you will, of what God is about. And so if we're going to be Christians, if we're going to be knowledgeable Christians, if we're going to be saintly Christians and righteous Christians, then we need to look to something to remind us of who God is. That's why Scripture and 587 and everything else that happened in the Bible is so incredibly important. Now, can we be Christians without that knowledge? Can we be Christians if we simply say, the Lord is the one I will follow, period. Jesus Christ is my Savior. I would assume so. I think God is a grace-giving God, and anybody who wants to be a part of the kingdom surely can. Can we be a Christian without it, knowing what 587 BC is? Absolutely. But what can we be if we know? What can we do if we know the entirety of Scripture, if we understand the breadth of Scripture? Not every word and not every phrase. We know it's a lifelong quest. But if we're diving down into Scripture all the time, gleaning more from it, learning more about who God is, what might it cause it to happen in our own faith walk? See, I'm not someone who believes knowledge is going to save us. I'm not foolish enough to believe that. But I do believe knowledge empowers us to be better at what we want to do. If you want to be a better accountant, I can add two plus two, but I can do a whole lot better if I have knowledge. Do you want to be an engineer? Well, I can build a little something in the front yard, but what can I do if I have knowledge? Can I be a Christian in my church sitting on the pew every Sunday and living good life? Absolutely we can. But what can we do if we have knowledge? So I hope that you go gain the knowledge of scriptures. I hope you find time not to watch your favorite show, but to go dig into the scriptures one night a week, or two nights, or four nights, or every night. To do that, I want to invite you to something, by the way. We have been doing a new Bible study online. It's called The Bible and the Blues, and it's a study of 587, actually. And so 
Uh, I took that online study and I've broken it down into what's called a podcast. You may about know what a podcast is. You may not. The good news, it's very easy. If you go to our Facebook page or our website, you'll see a podcast. You'll say podcast episode one. You click on that and you start listening. You can do it while you're doing dishes or cleaning the house or on your project or working out or whatever you're doing. You can just plug your headphones in and listen all you like or listen on your phone or wherever you want to. The point is, is that there's a place to gain some knowledge because here's what I desire. Here's what I yearn for as a a community of faith that maybe we don't know everything about the scriptures. Maybe we haven't dug to the, to the ends of it to find everything we can find, but I want to be in a community of faith who desires more than anything else to learn those things. So go find podcasts, go find books. Let's all study and learn. Let's yearn for knowledge. Let's thirst for righteousness. And let's find it in Scripture because that is where God is revealed. Go read your Scriptures, you all. Find out who God is and let's serve an amazing God. God bless you all and bye-bye.